Hello my friend, in this video I'm going to be going over some of the changes that I've been noticing to audience targeting when you want to be running Facebook ads, not just for Spotify, but also things like lead generation and also if you're running any ads for uh, selling any products like CDs or merchant or anything like that. These are a bunch of different tests I've been doing in the last little while and some of the experience that I've found from studying um, not just people that are talking about Facebook ads for artists and music related stuff, but also just generally, as well as some work that I've been doing as doing some marketing consulting with a really cool agency in uh, Toronto, the city that I'm in and around and that kind of thing. Um, and so what I think is important here is one is that you're going to want to follow kind of the optimization and testing process that I've been talking about in other videos and particularly whenever you get any new information like this or something new that you can test. You're always going to want to do something like following the champion and challenger framework, uh, which is essentially uh, having that champion, the the ad set with the audience targeting that's been working well for you in the past. And you're going to want to introduce a challenger to try to beat that, which could be, for example, something that you might learn here in this video. And you're going to want to always make sure that you're following that kind of framework and some of the optimization best practices that I've been talking about in other videos. I guess if you haven't seen any of that, make sure you just look it up in my channel or whatever, make sure you're a little bit brushed up on some of that because you're going to make sure that you're always, especially if something's working for you, you want to test things in a very measured uh, approach. And then also whenever you hear anything from some random guy on the internet, you're going to want to try to test it in a measured approach too. And for one, I could be completely wrong. You don't know. So you want to test it yourself. And for two, uh, a lot of this stuff is very nuanced. It could be different for different artists and some things might work for you and some things might not work for you. So it's important to always approach things with a uh, optimization and uh, testing kind of mindset so that you get the best results possible and so that you're doing things in a measured way like I've been mentioning. So hopefully that was enough rambling and we can actually jump into it. Before we do, I should mention that this clip is actually from a workshop that I did on Facebook ads and what I've been noticing that has changed in 2023 and talking about optimizing Facebook ads. And if you'd like to be able to join one of these in the future, we also follow them up with some live Q&As best way is to join my mailing list. And the best way to join my mailing list is to check out the link in the description. There's the seven step Spotify release checklist that you can check out. It's the seven steps that I follow every time I'm releasing music. Enough rambling. Let's dive right into audience targeting in 2023 for artists and musicians. So now we're going to move into a little bit more advanced stuff and a little bit of some of the stuff that I've been finding as changes in 2023. I'm just going to take a quick sip of water. And one of the biggest things I've been noticing is changes to audience targeting. And I think there's kind of three three reasons I've been seeing this. One is if you've been following Facebook ads in the past, you might have noticed that when you're targeting different audiences and artists and genres, maybe like five years ago, the recommendation was to find an audience size that's around uh, 50,000 to 500,000. A year later, everybody was recommending find, make sure that there's 500,000 to a million, a million to 10 million. Each year, it's going up and up and up. And one of the big reasons for that is as Facebook's learning algorithm gets smarter and smarter and creepier and creepier, to be honest, it's it doesn't need as detailed targeting to find the right person. And instead, it's better to give it a lot more of an audience size so it has more to work with and more tests that it can run with its machine learning algorithm. Second thing is in the last couple of months, I've also been studying and really researching um, Facebook ads experts that aren't just talking about doing it with music. They've been doing it with like larger budgets and um, experimenting with like e-commerce and all that kind of stuff. And I've been learning quite a bit from them. And the third thing is in the last couple of months also, I started doing some marketing consulting for a pretty cool marketing agency uh, in Toronto. They've worked with some pretty big brands that I can't even really talk about, but um, they have been showing me some of the things that they're doing. Uh, with ads and I'm just kind of like okay I'm gonna start taking that and trying that and now I'm gonna kind of teach you that as well so it's pretty pretty simple and I uh, I should just get into it so in the past the main thing was what you would usually be setting up is you'd have the ad sets and you might have two or three artists in each ad set and then the audience size might be 10 to 20 million and you might have two or three of these different artists ad sets and have them fight against each other and the idea would be that you could see which artists are working better and which aren't working as good and you can cut the ones that aren't working and add new tests. And you'd probably do the same thing with the genres. Uh, maybe have one or two in a genre ad set and then maybe have another genre ad set too. So you're, in terms of your ad campaign, your ad set might look something like this. A bunch of different artists against a bunch of different genres. So 
like I kind of alluded to, the way that things are moving now is a lot simpler and easier, thankfully. And the main thing is these kind of stacks. So instead of having multiple different um, ad sets with just a couple artists in it, now you can create just a simple artist stack. So this ad set will have all of the possible artists that might make sense. The audience size will be much larger, maybe something like 50 million plus, and you just have to throw them all in there. So it's a lot simpler for you. So just anyone who might be relevant, you just throw them in there in your artist stack, in that ad set, and you're good to go. And similarly with the genres, instead of breaking them up into a bunch of different ad sets, you can just throw all the relevant genres into one genre stack ad set, much larger audience size, and that's really all you need to do, which is really nice. And then here's something that's really interesting. I wasn't sure it was going to work, but I've been testing it and it does work. Generally, the idea now is to have that artist stack in, in one ad set, have a genre stack, another ad set, and then you want to have a broad stack as the third ad set that you're testing. And this is just completely wide open targeting. So you're not targeting Spotify. You're not targeting any genres or artists. You're keeping the ages wide open, the, the genders wide open, all that kind of stuff. And you have that that running as well. And so the reason that, that this is all working, again, is because Facebook is getting better and better at what it's able to do. So the bigger audience size that it's able to run tests in, the more it's able to optimize on its own. And so what you're able to find is with the artist stack and the genre stacks, that's where you can find relevancy that is like, you know, uh, relevancy to your actual music. Um, and then you can find scale in the broad stack. So Facebook will start running its... Um, traffic to those artist stacks and those genre stacks that might be artists and genres that are similar to you and then kind of get a feel for what works and then it can start experimenting also with that broad stack and the nice thing about the broad stack is you won't run into some kind of ad fatigue where the audience size is too small so Facebook is hitting the same people and it's becoming less and less effective because there's just a, a massive massive amount of audience size for it to test on so really really cool stuff there and then moving on to that another big thing if you've gotten the advanced Facebook ads course we eventually start to look into adding in lookalike audiences and those retargeting audiences. And before it would look like we might have a lookalike audience ad set with just maybe retargeting the people that, um, or making a lookalike audience of the people that have viewed your ads or visited your music links. We might have another lookalike ad set that has people that have engaged with your Facebook or Instagram. And then we might have retargeting ad sets. So similar to the lookalikes, but we're doing those custom audiences, those retargeting audiences of video views and web visitors. And same thing with the Facebook and Instagram um, custom audiences, and retargeting audiences. That was where we'd have it before, a lot more complex, trying to, you know, have them all singled out into different ad sets so we could see which is working better and all that kind of stuff. Now it's just so much easier. All we want to do is just have one lookalike and retargeting stack. You just throw every single lookalike audience, every single custom audience that you want to retarget in that one lookalike retargeting stack and that's all you really need so that's a big change that i've been noticing as we're moving into 2023 hello again my friend hopefully that clip gave you some interesting perspective on how at least i've been noticing that audience targeting has been changing and going moving forward again like i mentioned at the beginning of the video you're going to want to approach this with a testing and optimization mindset and framework introduce these new ideas as challengers to the champion ad sets that you already have so that you can see how they work against um, what you already have working for you right now. I think that's really important or just run a new testing campaign, something like that. Just approach it with uh, that kind of mindset. And I like where this is heading also, by the way, because things are getting a little bit more leaning into Facebook's creepiness, um, but also it's making it easier. So instead of having to create all these different artist targets and stuff like that and worrying about overlapping and constantly having the Facebook uh, recommendation thing saying, hey, let's combine some ad sets you're doing that already and it's becoming a lot easier because you're just dumping all the possible ideas into an, an audience um, an ad set there uh, which can be a little bit less stressful because there's a little, little bit less on you you can just drop it all in there and and move on to other things because there's more to life than Facebook ads and there's more to being an artist than Facebook ads so hopefully you found this video useful again if you would like to dive a little bit deeper and you want to maybe know about these workshops that I'm doing in the future Check out the seven step release checklist in the description. It'll give you the checklist for free and it's all that good information, the stuff that I'm following every time I'm releasing something on Spotify to make things as seamless and quick and as effective and as not messing with my money and time as possible. And then also you'll be able to jump on the mailing list by following that checklist and putting your email in there. So then you can hear about the workshops and all the 
daily things that I've been doing and all the tests that I've been doing like about a month or sometimes even two before things show up here on YouTube. So if you found this video useful, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, my friend.